going to continue with the presentations. We are designing the vocational education and training of the future, and now I would like to invite somebody who is promoting a conspiracy in education. He proposes to wake the Diplodocus up. Let's welcome the writer, philosopher Jose Antonio Marina, who is the director of the Parents University. No. <laughs> en primer lugar, gracias por la invitación, eh, porque a mí me gusta hablar de educación. Me parece que es una experiencia alegre. Thank you very much poética. for having invited me to be here. I'm going to be sharing with you my experience, a constructive experience. I agree with Jorge Arevalo when he says that we need to be optimistic. There was a graffiti once on a wall saying, let's leave pessimism for better times. When we are in a difficult situation, that is exactly when we, especially we as teachers, we need to remember that we have optimism within our DNA. And also I am delighted to be here among vocational education and training teachers. When I wrote the book, the white book about teaching, I wrote it with my team, I insisted to say that maybe teachers are the ones who have more challenges ahead of themselves because the field of implementation and the different matters with which they are working are evolving very quickly. And that means that if all the teachers need to be training themselves all the time, we need lifelong learning. When we talk about vocational education and training, that is even more important. Right now, we are coming into a new period of education, a new era of education. The Global Forum for New Education says that maybe in this period, schools are going to are going to be undergoing the biggest ch changes that have ever taken place. And why is it so? Well, because we don't know very well what we should be teaching. Everybody says that we have come into not into the society of knowledge, but the society of learning, the learning society. There is a book, the name of which is The Era of Learning, how to have and create this uh, era of learning society. Why is it so? Because there is a law that all teachers all politicians and all citizens should know about, which is Ribbon's law, which says anybody, all persons, all people, all companies, all societies, in order to survive and to thrive, we all need to learn at least at the same speed as the environment is changing. In the past, when the environment was changing very slowly, maybe one period of training was enough. But when we are in changing environments, when they change quicker and quicker, if we do not update our learning, if we are not able to keep on learning, we are going to be in trouble. And that is something that we need to remember, because when we think about our students, we are there to help them. I come from the education field. I am a professor. I have been working in secondary education. And I have not been teaching university. I think that in university, they have abandoned their teaching vocation. Where I like to be is in the classroom together with our young people. 
side by side with them, just as many of you. And we need to prepare our students, our young people, for the new world, for the VUCA world. What is the VUCA world? That, implies, that implies variability, yes, because we are in a changing world. All the things are going to remain, you know, we need to evolve and innovate and because things are changing very, very quickly. And then you implies uncertainty. This is a highly uncertain world. As you know, the more information we have, the bigger uncertainty gets. Now, more and more, we get information, we get loads of information. Students look at their mobile phones 400 times per year, and all those information impacts, that information has an impact. And we don't know what to do with it. C stands for complexity. We are all in the same world. Networks are working. Before, we used to apply these networks just talking about the weather, yes, when we say that a butterfly can generate a typhoon in the Caribbean, but today in the world of education and in the scientific world, that is true as well. So if there is a problem in China, in the economy, this is going to be having an impact in an industry in Mexico. And also something important is that for us it is difficult to understand or to recognize patterns within the complexity of the world. So what what are we supposed to do with our students? They are going to be working with, two, with new tools. They are going to be thinking with concepts that have not been invented yet, and they are going to be facing problems. And we don't know which their problems are. So what is our task for us, teachers? And who is going to be making the decisions about what we're going to be teaching? It is not up to politicians, it is not up to parents, they don't know, priests only know about their churches. Scientists know about their science, but they don't know about other sciences. So, we experts in education, it is up to us to become the caregivers for our students in terms of the future. In the past, at school, the only thing that was happening was that we were transferring knowledge, society said. You should be transferring those skills or that long knowledge. We were just transmitting knowledge, but now society doesn't know what we need to be conveying, what we need to be transferring, because society is evolving all the time. So we need to be able to think in advance if we do not want to leave our students unprotected, without protection in this world, which is going to become a global world world, a world full of opportunities, but a world which is going to be very hard and ferocious is going to be very hard on those who don't take advantage of those opportunities. And I think that in the Basque country you are doing things very well, but Arevalo was saying, this cannot be just improvised, this is not improvisation. We need to work, and it is true that here in the Basque country you realize that you needed to turn or to become a society of knowledge. Yesterday I was uh, talking to Professor Echenique, who was one of the regional ministers for education in the Basque Country, and I think that here in the Basque Country you were able to see that if uh, in a society we are not able to generate a learning ecosystem, that society is going to be marginalized against. It is true that you have been very successful, yes, and and something that shows that success is the unemployment rate. Unemployment rate among young people is the lowest unemployment rate in Spain. And you should be proud of that. So how can we 
work around education, which should be the approach. And I am going to be telling you about what we are doing within our group in the Nebrija University. Executive intelligence and education, that is what I am going to be telling you about right now. There is a term I enjoy very much, which is the term talent. We need to develop talent. Our students' talent. Talent is a fashionable term. In 1992, McKenzie Consultants published an article when they said the war for talent has started. All the companies need talent. They want to manage talent. But the economist said a few years later, they said, we are all speaking about talent, but what talent is? It is not a scientific concept, but it is a concept we all need to know how to handle. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you about a pupil, a student of mine, who is 14 years old in secondary education, and whenever he has a uh, 150 IQ level, he is very smart, very intelligent, he is a very hardworking person, a perfect student. But at a certain point, he reaches the conclusion that he is smarter than his teachers and smarter and more intelligent than the other students. And maybe that was true. He was a little bit bossy, he enjoyed having money, and and he turned into the leader of a band in his a group in his neighborhood. He started, you know, things a little bit crooked, you know. And right now, that kid is in prison. He's 25 years old because he was trafficking with drugs. So here comes the question. Was this guy intelligent or was he stupid? Well, he was intelligent because all the objective intelligence tests seemed to say that. But he was very silly because of how he used that intelligence. So we need two terms. One of them is the world that defines the structure of the capabilities a person has, and another term which indicates how a person is using those skills or those capabilities. And sometimes I use a metaphor and I say, well, listen, human intelligence is very similar to playing poker. Both in life as well as when we are playing, we are given certain cards. We have a genetic load, the economic situation, we are born within a specific culture or country, and then when you are playing cards, you are given cards. So both in life as well as when we play, we get, we receive good cards and bad cards. Of course, it is much better to be given good cards. But now comes the question. The person who has the best cards is going to be always the winner? No. What counts is knowing how to play. So that is the answer. It is true that there are things we cannot change. I am going to try and teach you so that you can know how to play well with what you have, with your cards. And if we are talking about children who have no health problems, that capability, that skill is essential. The fact of knowing how to play, how to use our skills. And now we know that our skills or that ability is much higher than what we thought. Things that in the past we used to say, you either have that skill or not, you either have it or not, such as creativity, memory, our skill to learn. We used to think that that could not be improved, but now we know that we were wrong. Creativity, too, that can also be learned and improved. And we know that what we are doing when we are educating our children we are making it possible for them to enlarge their intelligence structures. Those structures, yes, that is that is even anatomically true. Talent doesn't come from the beginning. Talent appears at the end. 
after we have been trained. Through education, we are going to be generating talent. And we all know that the biggest wealth we have in nations are not agricultural production or raw materials or financial capital. No, the biggest wealth is talent. We are sure about that. And that is why now the education system implies an essential provider, an essential wealth provider, also in economic terms. And that is why right now all the nations are in a state of emergency in terms of culture. They all know that they have to do something, because if not, they are going to miss the train. In the year 2000, between, between the year 2004 and 2008, there have been 400 education reforms, most of which have been useless, because they became, because they couldn't produce effects. So we are running against, this is a race, and the European Commission, they say by the year 2030, we need to create almost 40 million high-skilled jobs. Before, we were also speaking about that, and we are not going to be able to make it. And there is going to be a mismatch. We are going to end up having to import high-skilled people, because that is what they are doing right now in India or in China, importing those highly skilled people. So, from the point of view of education, what do we have to do? We need to go and say to society, listen, listen, we know how to make it, and if we don't know, we are going to learn. And we are going to make attempts we are going to study and see how to solve this problem. Because it is true that it is a social justice and an economic problem. We cannot neglect our students. We need to do something for them. And how are we going to generate talent? What I said before, is it true what I said when I was speaking about talent? Or was I just sending a rhetoric message? Yes, it is true. We can generate talent. Well, we all know about neurology. Neurology is very optimistic because whenever there is a discovery, they say that our capacity to learn is much bigger compared to what we thought. But now there is another science which, until this moment, was somehow pessimistic, which is genetics. At the end of the 20th century, you know, we were able to decodify the human genome. We know how it works. We know how to use it. We have been very successful in genetic terms. We can transfer genes from one species to the other. The evolution has been huge, but it is true that at the same time there was pessimism. You know, as if the dice had been thrown, and if you had been lucky, good for you. But uh, today we are talking about epigenetics, and not only about genetics. And epigenetics say that each of us are born, and each of us we have a specific genome inherited from our parents. But not all the genes are activated. Some of them get expressed, but not all of them. And the fact of expressing themselves depends upon the environment. And in this sense, education is included. So today we have a possibility ahead of us, and it is true that it is quite scary. So does it mean that through the learning process, does this mean that we are able to change the expression of certain genes? Yes, that's right. And if we don't give our children that education, they won't be able to activate the expression of those genes? Maybe not. So what I was telling you about the comparison between intelligence and poker, well, now I have to change the ending of the story because now I say, yes, of course, we are going to be teaching you to know how to play with what you have. But if you play well enough, then you will be able to change the cards you were given. So maybe this seems to be a contradiction, right? But the brain and genetics mystery, that is how they work. If our young people, if our adults too, if we are given the right training, we can activate a skill 
skills that we would have never been able to develop. So it is true, and this is not something rhetorical. Yes, in fact, it is true. We can promote and expand talent, and we need to do that. And we need to be able to know how to do it. But we need to speak about intelligence in other terms. We need a new idea. And that is what I am going to try and explain right now to all of you. Well, I have given my presentation and you can take a look at it later on to get more details. But let me tell you about uh, education and to tell you a story. In the month of June, in the city of Bilbao, there was a very important congress, the International Conference on Thinking. And at that point, in Bilbao, we were still talking about multiple intelligence, about that method, but what we are working with is even much more powerful. Yes, because it makes it possible for us to solve problems concerning what do we need to be conveying, which are the skills that we need to have and that we need to transfer in this world where ideas are going to be replaced by others, what type of personality should our students have to be successful. In the world of work, we have seen certain clues. Certain multinational companies such as Manpower, who are there trying to study and to know how training should be, now they have repla replaced the term employability by learnability, the capacity or the capability to learn. Are you able to learn or not? That is the most important thing. And if you are able to learn, then you will get a job. But if you are not willing to learn, or if you are unable to learn, then it is clear that you won't be successful. Clinton's Secretary of State also spoke about it, and he said the new poor people are those who are not willing or who are not in a position to learn. That is why we have a very clear social added responsibility, because we are also going to be a driving force in terms of economic distribution, economic creation, but to do so we need to get and to be much, much better compared to how we are right now. And we are going to be suffering a lot of pressure and we will have to accept it just as you are doing that, being optimistic, but knowing that we are going to be making mistakes, but knowing that we will learn from those mistakes. And also knowing that, uh, you know, that uh, we have to make it possible for the country to trust us. If we are in a country and we don't trust the education system, then that will be a very bad starting point. But we have to be convincing. We have to say to everybody, don't worry, we know what we are doing. Things are complex, but please trust us. We know what we are doing, because we all have learned something, all of us teachers. I remember that there was a professor in the US in the pedagogic school. He was training students. And on the very first day of university, he said, listen, all this summer, I have been teaching my dog how to talk. The dog is right there if you want to to see my dog and to see how the dog talks. The dog came in, five minutes, the dog isn't saying a word, the word is not saying anything, five minutes later and suddenly a student says, excuse me, professor, your dog cannot talk. And the professor says, oh, that's a very good remark. And that is very useful too for your job. Please remember that I said that I had taught my dog how to talk, but I didn't say that the dog had learned and that now the dog could talk. That is our task, but our task, we want our students to learn. That is, you know, at the end of the day, what we should be achieving. The problem is that 
In the different states or national education systems, those systems should be guaranteeing the education system. That doesn't mean that they are going to be doing that by themselves. They are going to be working through private or through public institutions, but the state, the nation has to guarantee quality and universality in education. But right now, at this moment, what we also see is, or we should be able to know how to make it, how to turn these systems into learning systems, into successful learning systems through which our students are getting those skills. So what are we talking about here? We are talking about executive intelligence. And I think that this image is very important. If uh, you come out of this building with this image in mind, I think it will be very useful for you. Human intelligence has two layers. First, well, when we talk about animals, even if they are very intelligent, they only have one layer. We have a brain which gets information, elaborates information, assesses things, stores things, and then the brain produces a response, a movement. Let's imagine, do animals think? Yes, yeah, sure, of course animals think, but in a different way. Let's imagine that you go to the mountain and there is an eagle, and the eagle spots a rabbit. And then at that point, the eagle goes towards the rabbit. And then at that point, the eagle's brain has to start doing calculations, and not even the most powerful machine would be able to calculate all that. The eagle has to take into account the height, the feathers it's going to be moving, the angle required to be able to get closer from the rabbit, how to modulate the movements. All those are calculations. And when we ask a computer to do all that, we need to use very, very complex equations. And then, at what, at what point? Because if the angle is not the right one, then there will be an accident. The eagle will be suffering an accident. So our brain is all the time establishing those calculations and using information. But we don't know how we handle and how we manage that information. For example, a little tiny problem. Have you visited the planet Mars? No, none of you? Well, did you have any problems to answer this question? No, I don't think so. You replied quite quickly, 200 milliseconds, that's the time it takes. Here comes now the most important question. How come did you know that you never, that you had never visited Mars? You are going to say, well, I couldn't picture. No, no, you haven't done anything at all. You have asked your brain, and your brain has replied. And we don't know how we did it. So what happens? We have a huge machine that we share with animals, but we have a second layer, as I said before. And this second layer makes it possible for us to manage this whole big machine. We don't know how we do it, but we can decide tomorrow that at 5 past 10 tomorrow morning that we're going to start learning Chinese. For example, in the lower floor, all the animals have something that we are worried about, which is the willingness to do something or motivation. What happens if we don't have motivation if the upper floor that takes decisions doesn't work? Uh, properly ah, pues isn't no working properly, then um, pues no you're nada. at the mercy of the downstairs floor, es which is the one that Hemos deals with motivation. Que si no We've actually ganas thought de hacer algo, that if we didn't no want to do something, we couldn't es do problema, it, and that's a problem. Because we all do lots of things, even though we don't want to do them. 
porque las ganas suben de aquí. The will to do something comes upwards. Oh, this should work. It's Suben not working. It comes Mientras from the, las down the ground floor, floor. Whereas decisions come from si the no for, upper floor si no downwards. And if we don't train our executive functions system, well, you find children and teenagers who aren't able to manage their huge ability to care attention to learn que no dominan. La educación de las funciones ejecutivas va a ser el gran salto posiblemente educativo que vamos a tener. Un ejemplo. Todos los animales tienen mecanismos de atención automática. Habéis visto una gacela, está viviendo, oye un ruido y vuelve sus orejas porque para mí está desistido. Because they've got to analyze that noise. They do it automatically. We also have that ability as humans. But not only that, not only do we react to stimuli that provoke our attention, but we can concentrate on something that we're interested in. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. That attention is a very important part of the process. And they're at the mercy of what's coming from the downstairs Entonces, upwards. En ese momento es prioritario que sepamos and at that time, que si therefore, it's priority to know that if we niños, want to develop the intelligence of these children and also their ability to learn and their ability to control their emotions, we need to insist from the time they are very small abajo, child, claro, children that they develop. And, and, of course, the bottom part as well, that's to do with memory, that's where skills are laid down, that's where habits are Learned. That's where Pero agreements are simplified. But obviously, tanto, uh, si no funcionamos, si no we don't have a good todos los manager of all of this. All of those tools that are in the lower floor aire, uh, no will work willy-nilly and que, si won't be very coordinated. So, alumnos, if we want to develop talent in our children, we need to help them memoria, uh, train the que, lower floor, which is their memory, and also train the upper level, the upper floor, which are the executive que son functions. Hasta donde Hasta donde hemos conseguido aislarlas son estas. La primera es la activación. Un cerebro para aprender necesita estar en estado, en estado activo. Hay una, estaba a punto de traerles unas imágenes estupendas, que son imágenes funcionales por resonancia magnética, que es como, como funciona el cerebro, que ha sacado el MIT. Eh, 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 la doctora eh, eh, Rosalind Roca que demuestran que la actividad de uno de nuestros alumnos mientras escucha una clase es menor que la actividad de ese cerebro cuando está durmiendo. No, pero no es... No, no es funny. Es literalmente cierto, pero eso es muy, muy espectacular. Es muy espectacular. De manera que si no conseguimos despertar el cerebro de nuestros alumnos, no van a aprender Bueno, por eso todo buen profesor sabe que durante los cinco primeros minutos de la clase lo que debe intentar es despertar no a sus alumnos que están aparentemente despiertos, sino el cerebro de sus alumnos que puede estar en un estado de pasividad La capacidad de activar el cerebro es una de las primeras funciones ejecutivas. Es lo que por medios artificiales se hace pues con eh, tomando anfetaminas. Parece que tiene tal cantidad de contraindicaciones que no lo podemos hacer. Pero que sin embargo, el mantener el cerebro... Fijaros, la diferencia que hay entre un cerebro activo a la hora de aprender y un cerebro pasivo es tan sumamente radical que hace que determina cuál va a ser el proceso académico de ese alumno. En segundo lugar, la inhibición del impulso. Bueno, un niño impulsivo an impulsive child doesn't concentrate his attention and has difficulties learning. The same happens to an impulsive adult who's a person who moves from a desire to an action without putting the brakes on from the upper level. We need to put the brakes on impulses to see whether they're good, to see 
para whether poder continuar dirigiendo nuestra acción, qué es lo que hace todo esto. Lo que estamos viendo es si podemos dirigir la enorme maquinaria de aprendizaje, que es nuestra Hay una prueba que nosotros hacemos a los niños de 5 y es una prueba muy divertida y está colgada en YouTube y lo podéis ver porque lo volvéis a divertir se llama la prueba de las chuches de las chucherías la persona que está con el niño le da un pastel y le da este pastel es tuyo And he says, to him, well, that cake's comer. yours, so you can eat Pero, it if you want to. However, si no te lo comes, if you don't eat it fuera, whilst I'm outside the room, volver, when I come back into the room, you'll be able to eat it, and I'll give you another Entonces, one. So you leave the, the room, and you record what the child Cinco. does. The five-year-old child. Entonces, hay niños que There are some children who stuff the cake, and they don't vamos. even take the wrapping off it. Y hay niños And there are no some children comérselo. who don't want to eat the cake because they're thinking of the price. But there are some children who have this sort of confused way of going about things, they sit in front of the cake, they stare at it, they pick it up, they look at the bit, they take a little crumb, and the moment they've taken, uh, eaten one crumb, 15 seconds later they've eaten the whole cake. And there are other children who take another atypical strategy the most frequent which we're moving to see it is that they uh, cover their eyes they put their hands over their eyes and they sit there and they put up with it or they start running around the room and they don't realize that if they sit there they, they realize that if they sit there and think of the cake the cake's stronger than they are but if they're distracted then they won't be attracted to the cake so they try to distract themselves but what's important with all of this is that the psychologist who invented this test called Walter Bissett and in fact one of his books has just been translated in Spanish it's called The Sweet Test or El Test de las Golosinas you can read it, it's very interesting y un grupo de investigadores en Nueva Zelanda, en lo que se llama el Tunneling Project, han seguido a niños que se han sometido a este test durante 30 años. Y han visto que el resultado de este test, que técnicamente se llama test de aplazamiento de la recompensa, predice mejor cuál va a ser la evolución académica del niño, su inserción en el trabajo y su inserción en la vida social de manera que cuando nosotros queremos ver y digamos avisorar un poco el futuro del niño el saber el resultado de este test o el intentar que en este test los niños tengan buen resultado estamos asegurando su futuro esa es una función ejecutiva que es la función ejecutiva que corresponde result, a la dirección del, del recurso. La dirección de la atención, de eso Now ya then, he hablado. ¿Por attention. qué tenemos tantos uh, problemas en este momento con la atención? Why is there so many, en los últimos why congresos there so many que yo he oído, entre el 10 y el 12% de la población escolar the, se dice que tiene deficiencia de atención con o sin hiperactividad. No es muy sensato. Y una parte importante de ella van medidas a la atención. ¿Qué es lo que está pasando ahí? Claro que hay un trastorno educativo, un trastorno un pequeño trastorno neurológico, pero no más de en el 1,5% de la población. Lo que hay en el resto es que no estamos educando la atención de ellos. Y por lo tanto, aparecen una serie de, de síntomas sobre el control emocional. What about emotional control, the next on the list? Emotions come from the lower floor of the brain. We don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another person. But we don't know why we love one person and not another cualquier peligro que haya a su alrededor. So y si no adecuamos esa parte de su piso de abajo, 
the part of their lower level of their brain so that they're more tolerant of difficulties and able to put up with uh, difficulties. So they're going to be very ill-prepared for life, the rest of their lives. So we need to know how we can deal with that structure so that the occurrences that go to the upper level are more productive. They help the child be happier. They help them stop worrying so much. I'm going to go over the others very quickly. Quickly, the la planificación y organización de next is planning and organizing lo que caracteriza al piso de arriba es que es capaz de elegir metas y entonces de manejar toda la gigantesca posibilidad que tiene de aprender y de adquirir habilidades para qué para conseguir las metas y fijaros que esa, esa es una, una exclusiva también de la inteligencia humana somos la única especie capaz de entrenar ¿Qué es, el ¿Qué es el entrenamiento? What is training? What do I mean el when I say training? Es training is yo elijo una meta. I choose a target y me pregunto, ¿y and I ask myself, how am I going to get to that target or that objective? I'm going to meet that objective. And I can develop the necessary skills to achieve es that target. That's what training is. Tarea educativa es and our educational task is to get children to do that. Somos en we are trainers, we are math trainers, language trainers, mechanics trainers, we are administrative trainers, en, or trainers or coaches, en, en, en un we are lab trainers. Es this is what we do, si we are trainers, we are coaches, and what we're trying to do is to get our children to acquire the necessary habits to achieve their targets, to achieve their aims. So we also need to help them choose those el hecho de que demos tanta importancia a los dos, so unos, dos últimos cursos de secundaria en, los, eh, en el campo de la orientación es porque tenemos que ayudar a nuestros alumnos a que sepan que tienen que elegir su y ya veis que ya seguro que se ha visto esta inicia la dificultad que tienen muchas veces hacerlo porque los chicos y las chicas no saben muy bien lo que les gusta ni lo que esperan y una tarea nuestra es ofrecerles lo suficiente experiencias educativas para ver si con suerte descubren algo en que se sientan que reciben energía suficiente Provide them sufficient energy to take necessary. all the necessary learning steps no lo, to achieve no that. Saben, and on many occasions they don't actually know what they want and they have tremendous difficulties in understanding that what they like actually may be of value. I'm trying to get people I'm trying to get un derecho que me parece fundamental. included in the Declaration of Children's Rights a, a right a which I feel is fundamental which is that all children have the right to experience deserved success at least on one occasion whilst they're at school. Bueno, si muy torpe, and what happens if, no if the child's very clumsy? Es well, that's, los docentes, that's not our problem. Teachers should para be sufficiently wise to be able to organize a child's target or objective so that that child can say, I did it, I got there. Because that's también, like a adults también nos interesa a saber que hemos sido capaces de hacer algo. No hay nada más triste que sentirse incapaz o que sentirse impotente. Bueno, los niños en la escuela con mucha frecuencia y niños que pasan por todo su recorrido educativo sin haber sentido nunca esa, 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 esa emoción, la emoción de he sido capaz de hacer. Y eso nosotros lo tenemos que, ten, que, que tomar como objetivo prioritario that should be one of our main objectives when we teach. And children are telling us this, all children in all cultures between the ages of three and four say the same thing. And if they all say it, then it must be something that's responding to one of their basic needs, which is, Mom, look what I'm doing. Mom, look, look, look what I'm doing. What are they asking us when they say that? What they're asking us is that we look at them, that we look at the fact that they're progressing and that we say to them, oh, you've done that really well. And this is something that should be present in schools as well. This is one of the main driving forces of school motivation, that children, adults, 
que están progresando y que lo sepan. And they need to know that. They need to realize de que están, de que están that they're progressing. La planificación, planning por eso, es lo que tira, is lo que va a tirar de todo el esfuerzo educativo. No podemos trabajar sin saber que estamos trabajando para, un, para una meta. Por eso, estamos incluyendo for, Finlandia, Finlandia, que ha cambiado Finland, todo su sistema educativo, porque no estaba, de, porque no estaba contenta con los resultados de PISA. PISA results that ha cambiado todo su sistema, un nuevo cambio ahora en septiembre. Starting a new change and is going to base all its Cuando education on projects. It's going to be project-based education. If we educate on based on no projects, que que then we set a target, and we don't say you have es to learn all of this. We say you've got to develop a project, and to get to the uh, Entonces, objective of that project, you're going to have to develop the necessary hacer. skills. So that's what we're, it's all about. This is very powerful in a school in New York, in a very humble, poor neighborhood, a teacher talks to a little girl in the front row of class, a colored girl, and he says, how many feet does an arthropod have? And the poor little girl says, how many feet does an arthropod have? And Ojalá the poor tuviera little yo las mismas preocupaciones que usted. A girl says to the teacher, oh, pues, oh, isn't it a shame, pues, teacher? Pues, you seem to be very worried. I wish I was as worried as you were about the number of feet that an arthropod has. Poner a los, yeah, a sometimes it would seem para que se con ello, that what pues we las patas de los uh, try to get children, children to be enthusiastic no about no are the number of feet on an arthropod, pues, and children don't understand fijaros, what that's all about. But I was talking earlier about learning and training. And when I talk about training, otra demostración de por qué, mediante el aprendizaje, estamos literalmente, anatómicamente, ampliando nuestra inteligencia. Cuando hacemos, cuando hacemos una tarea complicada, por ejemplo, aprender a conducir, al principio, todos los movimientos tenemos que hacerla con la atención ejecutiva. We have to really pay attention to them and we use executive attention and it's very tiring. The same goes for air controllers, for air traffic controllers. They have to have uh, breaks every so often because they need so much attention that they tire immediately. And that happens to all of us. If you want to pay attention, it's very uh, exhausting. That's why when we're learning to drive, it seems that we haven't got enough hands or feet. And we're trying to look in the rearview mirror and we're trying to put our foot on the uh, clutch and brake and change gear, etc. But as we learn, the majority of these operations become automatic. And that means that we no longer are making such an effort. It's not using so much energy. We can actually pay attention to other things. And you know that when you're learning to drive. You see that with very, very complex operations. When we're learning, for example, a foreign language, initially we have to be para acordarnos de cómo se construye una frase. Esto es como con cuerda. Como, por ejemplo, los, eh, los ingleses, que esos son los sádicos completos, inventaron los phrasal verbs para que todos verbs. estuviéramos, primero considerando so que éramos muy tontos, we all, uh, y segundo, para que teníamos que estar con toda nuestra atención so pendiente en con qué demonios de, de preposición va este verbo. Damn bueno, preposition goes with final, which stupid verb. Eso, but in the end, even that can be automated. Lo hacemos and sin tener que estar we can do it without having to pay lo attention to it. So what arriba, you start out doing on the upper level abajo, of the brain goes down to the lower level of the brain and becomes an no automatic process that doesn't require any energy. Y por tanto, en ese momento That's ya why Incluso en inglés, a time pensar en hacer una frase ingeniosa. You can actually invent a, a funny sentence in English. No. Una vez que tenemos ya that que is, los hábitos se han automatizado, you've got automatic habits, once you've automated your habits, you can start eso. thinking what you can do with different elements of a sentence. Ser and these muy elements on the lower Ayer level can be very sophisticated. Yesterday I was speaking to... Echenique. Professor Enchenique, about why mathematical talent in part is automatic. Why is it that a great mathematician, because he's automated so many complex operations that he can do them 
without wasting attention, without exhausting himself, without even realizing what he's doing, because he's uh, uh, trained his mathematical brain. Fantastica. This is fantastic when you think about it, a creator. For a creator, creating means acquiring innovation habits. Eso se aprende, claro, son uh, habits to avoid routines. Uh, fantastic del buen, writer del buen has uh, acquired the habit of good style. No a great scientist has acquired the nuevas, habit of not taking normal routes, campo, of uh, trying different routes. And we can do that with los, our students. Los que para the methods that we have to develop creativity por ejemplo, los de la have de padres, been implemented las, in our edades. programs of the parents' es que university at all es ages. Es and we know that that's what happens. We can build fertile networks of connections in children. Absolutamente fastuoso, absolutamente we've got fastuoso. tremendous capacity to learn our brain Entonces, and I think that's the route we're going to take a, a so in education mira, we're going to say to children listen, cosas, we're going to teach you a series of pero things te vamos but a enseñar we're going to teach you a certain kinds of skills the upper floor skills that are going to allow aprendiendo. you to carry on learning for the rest of your life, metas, to carry on choosing your objectives, to carry on getting all your energy mobilized. La metacognición es una cosa eh, realmente a importante. Es una frase muy, una palabra un poco rara. Nosotros la estamos incluyendo ya en los programas, incluso en infantil. Es un poco repelente, pero muy gracioso ver a niños de 5 años que dicen de repente, hoy tenemos ejercicio de metacognición. Es un poquitín. Funny to hear them say that. And why have we done that? Because metacognition means thinking about how you're doing something. That's what metacognition means. You can not imagine to what extent this operation, which is very simple, actually speeds up a child's learning ability incredibly. Because what we say to the child is, how, how did you do this? No me ha salido el problema. But if you don't get no, it right, no uh, you can ask the child, Vamos why, why didn't you get the Vamos problem right? Cómo, Let's see cómo, what you did. Let's see o, o si lo haces de otra manera. if you can do it a different bueno, way. Esto es un, eso, and esto this es un, un is an educational pattern which is very powerful. We're going to take a el further step. No es solo de las personas, Talent isn't something just belongs to de las people, people de las but also to society, to associations, groups. And I think it even belongs to nations, to large societies. I think societies compartido. can develop shared talent. Cada vez que se relacionan dos o más inteligencias, aparecen fenómenos emergentes que no podemos prever. Yo empecé a estudiarlo después de pasar muchos años estudiando la inteligencia individual. Me di cuenta de que eso era una abstracción, que no existe. Claro que nosotros tenemos esa inteligencia, pero siempre se ha desarrollado en un entorno que la favorece o la bloquea. Y por tanto, necesitamos estar en entornos inteligentes. Environment. I, I say this because there's two cases that I was very much interested in. One was the intelligence of couples. Why is it that two very uh, intelligent individuals can come together and form a very stupid couple? I was worried about that. I'm not joking because it is a big problem that the, in our personal lives that the 20th century, century has left us and affects not just our happiness but also our education. And it's a mystery. What, what, is, what does happen there? That's firstly. Secondly, why are there intelligent schools and unintelligent schools? Why? All those people that are in a school are intelligent. But what happens when they get into contact with each other? I'm not going to talk here about policy or politics. I'm not referring to that because there are very intelligent people. But when they start talking about politics and policies, they say a whole lot of stupidities. But I'm not talking about that. But we're talking here about schools. schools. An intelligent school is a school in which a group of people who perhaps are not por el hecho de estar trabajando de una manera determinada, producen resultados extraordinarios. Ese plus es la inteligencia de ese centro. No es la inteligencia de las personas. Antes Jorge lo ha mencionado. No es la inteligencia agregada de las personas. Es que por el hecho de estar trabajando de una manera determinada, producen efectos emergentes. Producen, en este caso, efectos ascendentes 
ascending, emerging effects, whereas in the case of frustrated couples, they're descending uh, effects. So we need to look after the intelligence of schools, of learning ecosystems, of couples, of people. And this is all one of the ways that we have of improving the education of our children. So with all of that, we have something else that comes into play, which afterwards Enrique Danz will be talking about. He's the one that knows about that. I'm not going to talk about it today. But it is true that our children are going to have to face a reality that is changing at the speed of light, which is los avances de la inteligencia artificial. The advances that in the workplace we've seen with artificial intelligence, it said that 60% de alto nivel of high-level professions, even those that we are developing today, are going to be replaced by robots. Que nos ya hacen Not robots that no, robots que, are ejemplo, just going to screw in screws. No, robots that can write articles for decir, son, Forbes son, magazine. Son muy These are very, very sophisticated ro robots, sophisticated programs, which in the past humanos. could only be done by human beings. The star este program of IBM, artificial intelligence at the moment is a program called Watson, and there's a group in the US who wants this program called Watson to uh, be presented as a bueno, candidate to the presidency eh, of the US. Lo, ¿qué es, qué es lo que dicen? No, no, Stop laughing, más. it's not that funny. Y puedo to y puede tomar mejores decisiones. Because it, it's está, a program that can take great decisions. Because the, the problem is en las, that la capacidad de la inteligencia artificial the, no es solo que maneje muy bien información. Es que toma decisiones. To, uh, es decir, information information, que, puede to tomar, que puede tener funciones so ejecutivas. That AI no can, solo AI can have executive, uh, y eso nos hace pensar functions, not just lower level functions. functions. So that este makes us ask, well, how does all of this fit in? Podemos, and I think this helps us understand where we can go. In the five minutes that I've got left, I'm going to talk about the program we're working on, which is an education we're working on. We call it Centauro Project, Centaurus Project. And we would like to collaborate with you to try to put it in practice, because it's still a pilot project at the moment. Why have we called it the Centaurus Project? Well, a few years ago, there was an event that we were all moved by. Un programa de ordenador, Deep Blue, venció a Gary Kasparov, campeón mundial de ajedrez. Hasta ese momento estábamos pensando que el ajedrez era el colmo de la racionalidad humana y que si nos vencía una máquina, entonces es que ya pasábamos a segunda división. Las máquinas eran más inteligentes. Entonces cuando le preguntaban a Kasparov, dijo que iba a pasar con el ajedrez. Dijo, bueno, el próximo, el jugador de ajedrez del próximo siglo va a ser un jugador centauro. Con esto, cuando dice el centauro, tenía que haber estado el centauro ahí y que ha podido ver. Va a ser una inteligencia humana que va a aprender a manejar sistemas muy potentes, muy potentes de computación. Pero el asunto está que va a ser él quien tiene que aprender a manejarlos. Y va a tener They're going to have to learn to manage them ellos, and work with no them and collaborate with them, not just to be skilled, but also to be able to make use of the tremendous possibilities that these informáticos. computer systems are going to offer. And that's why los, los we're trying to get los computers inside the classroom en cada momento, en cada lección, en cada problema, so that they are sepamos there lo que tiene for que guardarse en la memoria del alumno and so that we know what needs to be kept in a pupil's memory, a pupil's brain, and what can be kept in the computer's memory. De, ¿Para qué lo voy a aprender si lo puedo so, encontrar? Es un it's ridiculous es un to say, why should I learn something if I can find it? That's absolutely ridiculous because me a esto desde todo, I've desde you know, que apareció, spent pues, a lot of time on this ever since I was a, a, a man I've 
Tengo que advertir que un burro conectado a Internet sigue siendo un burro. Y que por lo tanto lo que nos interesa es que quien está sentado delante de Internet sea muy inteligente. Sepa interpretar, sepa comprender y sepa usar las posibilidades que les dan las máquinas. Es el tipo de personaje de, de gran inteligencia que va a ser la inteligencia que vamos a tener que desarrollar que es una inteligencia con las funciones ejecutivas suficientemente potentes para que sepa manejar su memoria y manejar el ordenador. Y eso es lo que nos puede producir, sin duda alguna, un tipo especial de inteligencia. Cada vez que ha aparecido una gran tecnología, una gran tecnología de la inteligencia, ha cambiado el modo de manejar el cerebro. Sucedió cuando apareció la escritura, This, sucedió cuando apare uh, apareció la notación logarítmica, the, uh, cuando apareció la notación musical. Nadie hubiera podido pensar una sinfonía sin tener notación musical. Bueno, Nobody could have written a symphony without having a musical ability because it's broadened the way of thinking, that broadened our way of bueno, creating and broadened the way the mind operates. That's why we're in another kind of transformation which is going to be very que, tanto, powerful si and very no swift. Hora, and if we don't get no down to work, we're never going to know what to say este to our children. So that's the outcome. And it's now looked from a laboral en este momento, en casi todos los países, se ha roto un pacto social implícito que había entre la sociedad y sus nuevas generaciones. Y es un pacto del que están saliendo perjudicados mis alumnos. Y por eso yo aquí quiero defenderles a ellos y decir que no les estamos tratando bien. Porque el pacto es implícito que hacía la sociedad es, mirad, si vosotros cumplís vuestra parte, que es formaros, nosotros cumpliremos la vuestra, la nuestra que es daros posibilidades de aprovechar esa formación y de permitir organizar vuestro futuro. Ahora hay muchísimos alumnos nuestros que dicen, yo he cumplido mi parte, yo he cumplido mi parte, yo me he formado, yo he hecho todo lo que he hecho, y ahora no recibo la respuesta. En este momento, la gran tarea poética, la gran creación, la gran eh, tarea creativa que tenemos the todos en que todos nos debemos aportar y nos debemos eh, esforzar es precisamente en cómo inventamos el que, lo que en este momento necesitamos más nuevos puestos de trabajo nuevas formas de trabajar nuevas formas de poder decir a nuestros alumnos de los cuales en parte somos responsables pero la sociedad cumplir también su parte si vosotros cumplís a vuestra de formar nosotros intentaremos que tengáis posibilidades de elegir vuestras metas y desarrollar vuestro proyecto personal bueno, pues no tenemos más tiempo ni más que deciros por ahora muchísimas gracias y hasta la próxima